What is going on everyone? Welcome to another very exciting episode right here on the MI Gardener channel. In today's episode, we're gonna be deep diving into the topic of diatomaceous earth. We're gonna talk about what it is, what you can use it on, and what you should completely avoid using it on. And that's really the topic for today, or that's really the reason why I came up with this topic for today's video is because I have been absolutely bombarded and inundated with so many people misusing it and so many people on YouTube making videos falsely about it, people on forums fa falsely posting about it, and so many other people asking if it can be used on X, Y, or Z because they heard it could. Now, this is completely, completely a giant, massive topic to get into, so I hope I can make it under 15 minutes. So we're gonna jump right in into it because this is a huge package to unpackage here. All right, let's go. So first things first, I wanna talk about what diatomaceous earth actually is, because in order to know how it works, you have to know what it is. Diatomaceous earth, otherwise known as DE, and I'm just gonna call it DE for the shortness of this video, because saying diatomaceous earth perfectly every single time without sounding like I have a speech impediment is very difficult. And number two, diatomaceous earth is also very long to say, so I'm just gonna call it DE for short. And if I slip up, oh well, but I'm gonna to try to focus on calling it DE because it's quicker. So. DE is ground up seashells. They grind up seashells extremely fine to where it's basically a powder. Now, basically, it is a powder, but to your hands, it feels soft. But under a microscope, it is extremely jagged and sharp and, uh, and fractured and fragmented. And this makes it a very good insecticide. So when you take it and apply it, it needs to be used as an insecticide. That's the first mistake I see so many people making. So now we're gonna start talking about what you shouldn't use it on. Diatomaceous earth, otherwise known as DE. <laughs> I'm having a good day. Bear with me, I'm having a great day. So DE should never be used as a fungicide. I see so many people using DE on their squash plants, on their pumpkin plants, on their zucchini plants, their cucumber plants, their melon plants, when they get powdery mildew. D DE, <laughs> almost did it again there, geez. <laughs> DE is not a fungicide. It has no effect on fungus whatsoever. It is also not to be used on your tomatoes. Because it's not a fungicide, it can't be used to fix blight. I've seen so many people just spray down their, their plants to prevent against blight, I'm thinking to yourself, you have just completely wasted like $6 in DE because someone told you it was, it was effective against it. It's not effective, folks. It does nothing. So it is not a fungicide. That's the first thing you need to know. The second thing you need to know it is, is, it, is it is not a broad spectrum insecticide. DE is not for every single insect. In fact, if I could count on every hand and every foot of every person in this world, how many times I have seen it being misused on, a, on an insect that has no effect on, I don't think there'd be enough people in the world to count on every hand and every foot of every person, how many times I've seen this. It's just so unbelievably prevalent that it is not a broad spectrum insecticide. And if it sounds like I'm getting really worked up over it, it's because I am. I've seen countless blog posts and countless YouTube videos and constant Facebook posts and constant Instagram posts from people who think they know what they're doing, spreading this misinformation around to other people, causing them to spend money and effort where they do not have to because the misinformation is just so constantly spread around without knowing actually what it is and how it works. So it is not a broad spectrum insecticide. What a broad spectrum insecticide is, is essentially an insecticide that will kill whatever insect you spray it on. It kills indiscriminately. So if you take 10 or 20 or 1,000 different insects and you spray this on, it will kill them all. It's a lot like, uh, it's a lot like you using a weed killer in your lawn, right? I know, I don't use it. I'm just saying it's out there. It says, kills the weeds, not your lawn. That is not a broad spectrum herbicide because if it was, it would kill your grass 
and the weeds. It's a very specific, uh, brought, it's a very specific uh, herbicide that kills the weeds and not the grass. This is the exact same thing with DE. Now DE is 100% natural, it's 100% organic because again, it is just ground up seashells. That's all it is. So why it only works on one specific type of insect is because it's actually an arthropodicide. Now this is a term you'll never hear anyone else use in the history of mankind because it's just not a term that most consumers understand. And you have to actually understand biology in order, in order to understand what a, a arthropod is. An arthropod is any insect that has a segmented body and an exoskeleton. If it, if it has a segmented body and an exoskeleton, it is an arthropod. This is the only thing that diatomaceous earth works on. So we'll get back to that because again, we're deep diving, so this is gonna be a pretty broad topic, but what I don't want people using it on are anything but arthropods. Don't use it on caterpillars. Don't use it on squash vine boar uh, larva. Don't use it on moths. Don't use it on butterflies. Don't worry about using it on honeybees, or don't worry about using it around your pets. I've heard people say that it's harmful for pets. Folks, chinchillas roll in this stuff. In fact, farmers use it as a deworming agent because worms are arthropods. And if you feed it to your chickens in their chicken feed, it will kill the worms in the digestive tract because of its abrasive nature. So it does not kill your animals. It does not kill the other things that are not arthropods. That's because diatomaceous earth, as we talked about, or DE, as I'm trying to talk about, <laughs> is an arthropodicide. It only targets arthropods. So for those of you that are freaking out about using it around butterflies or honeybees, they're not arthropods. They are not affected. It will coat them, yes. It will not kill them. So what can it be used on? Arthropods. What shouldn't it be used on? Anything but arthropods. Got it? Good. What are some examples of arthropods? Ladybugs, a beneficial insect that it will kill. Not suggested to use it around ladybugs, but if it does get on ladybugs, it will kill it. It will kill worms. Worms, as I've mentioned, are arthropods. They might not look like an arthropod, like a beetle or an ant or a hornet or a wasp, which are arthropods, but it, worms are also arthropods, just different looking ones. So yes, if you have ants, you can use it. However, applying it to just a big pile will not do anything. You have to dust the ants, which makes it very ineffective. Don't use diatomaceous earth as, a, uh, as an insecticide against ants. There's far better options out there because if you dust them down, yes, it will work, but it does not actually uh, eradicate the problem. It just only kills a few that you're dusting them on because you actually have to land it on them. I've seen videos where people put a giant pile and say, look, it works. It doesn't work. It's just stopping the scent trail of, I've seen tons of videos. It's ridiculous. Anyways, back on topic. So use it on hornets, use it on wasps, use it on mites, spider mites in the garden, a great arthropod to use DE on. Use it on beetles, Japanese beetles, flea beetles, even fleas. If your dogs have fleas, use DE. If your cats have, if your cats have uh, fleas or mites or anything like that, use DE. So you can use DE to attack mites, beetles, uh, hornets and wasps, pretty much any type of uh, creepy crawly insect that has a hard exoskeleton, pretty much. I'm not gonna go through the whole list, those are the things you wanna use it on. And a really easy way to assess if it's an arthropod is does it have a segmented body? Roly polies, you know, roly polies. They look like little mini armadillos. Those have a segmented body. Those little, that little armored shell on the back, it's, a, it's an exoskeleton. Just look at it, look at the anatomy, pull it up on, on uh, Google, see an image. If it looks like it has an exoskeleton or see if it does have an exoskeleton, that means it'll work against it. And that's really what I want you guys to hone in on is just doing your research, doing your due diligence before you apply something so you're not wasting time and money. So the final thing that I wanna talk about is what makes DE so effective against arthropods and nothing else. You know, why if you apply it to a caterpillar, does it do nothing, but yet you apply it to a beetle and it pretty much just annihilates the thing. 
and that's because of the perfect combination of that the really small particle size and the the shape of the particles being like shards of glass and the exoskeleton you know caterpillars don't have an exoskeleton therefore it just sits on their skin and does not cause any abrasion however when you dust a beetle down the, the particles get underneath that exoskeleton and it causes them to feel like they're bathing in shards of glass. It's very, very sharp. It causes irritation, which then causes discomfort and they shed that exoskeleton. The only purpose of the exoskeleton is to protect, is to protect it from the sun and to protect it from pests or, or other predators. And so when you force the insect to shed the exoskeleton, you pretty much render it completely defenseless and it's either going to fry in the sun dehydrate in the air or get eaten up by a pest like a bird and this is what makes it so effective so i hope you guys enjoyed i hope you learned something new and you know if it sounded like i'm ranting it's just because i get passionate about this stuff i absolutely love talking about this stuff i'm a complete nerd with this type of stuff and so when i see a lot of misinformation around and i see people that are quote unquote gurus that are spreading this misinformation around I just get really quite flustered, not in a way that causes me to rant, but in a way that makes me want to get out there and passionately talk about the truths about it, because that's what this channel has always been about, are the truths about gardening, so that you can actually take that and inform others, as well as actually use it in your garden effectively so you become a better gardener. So I hope you guys enjoyed, I hope you found this fun and informative in some way. If you did learn something new, let me know in the comments box below, it would mean a lot. And also, if you have other uses for DE, let me know. I know it's also, there's food grade DE as well. So it's not even bad for humans. Now I wouldn't just suggest eating it, do your due diligence and research, but it's really great stuff. It's super effective. So I hope you guys enjoyed and I hope you learned something new. And as always, this is Luke from the MI Gardener channel, reminding you to grow big or go home. We'll catch you all later. See ya.